is because we said, this guy's cool. We think he can help us grow the youth ministry. And we saw him, and then we saw Mikey's uh, brother, Bobby, and they were like the two coolest guys we'd ever seen walk at the church because Pastor Jeremy at the time, he still is now, but then he had like veins in his arms. It was like total straight, I think it was steroids, but I'm not sure. And it, he just looked really like, we're like, if nothing else, all the girls will come because of him. Because they're surely not coming because of me. And so we went after for after uh, after Jeremy and uh, and Bobby. And you know, it turns out that you know great things happened with Pastor Jeremy. And we're proud of you, man. And so it's awesome to, to see everything going on. It's good to see so many uh, new people or the new uh, not new people, but but old friends and uh, you know people again. Zach, good to see you, man. And uh, when I saw you in the lobby, I got all excited. It's kind of tingly in my heart. It's not weird or anything, but I got excited about it. Mikey, when I saw you, I didn't get too excited. But it's a, no, I got really excited when I saw you, Mikey. I'm only kidding. And uh, I, a special shout-out to Mike and Lisa. You guys are awesome. Uh, I think I've probably known you longer than anyone else in the room. And so it's, uh, it's good to see so many awesome people here. And we're in for, for a good night. A lot of people are asking me what's going on, this and that. I'm not going to show a lot of pictures of what's going on. Uh, I have a few that, that I'll show you, but... Uh, not a whole lot because it's not uh, it's not about me it's about it's about what you can do and so I, when I show you these pictures it's about what God has for you and so I hope that you get that I'm not showing it to brag I'm showing it because I started off as a teenager at uh, at, uh, at, a, at a youth ministry in Middleburg Heights not knowing anything I said yes to Jesus when I was 18 and then from there just it was 10 years later something really, really cool happened and a bunch of little stuff along the way. And so what I'm about to share with you is because God has something big for you. How many in the room have a big dream? Anyone have a big dream? A couple people. That's good. If you don't have a big dream, hopefully you'll have a big one after tonight. So uh, this is where it all started. It started when I was 18 years old on a missions trip to Mexico, of all places. I was in Mexico at a city called Matamoros, which the name of the city it means, if you speak Spanish, you know what the name of the city means. I, I won't say it here because in case this is being recorded, but I find it funny that that's the city I went to, and, and now I'm going all over the world reaching Muslims. And so this is the picture where it all started. You may be saying, where in the world are you? I am that guy with the backpack kneeling down thinking he's cool. You know, I thought I was cool when I was 18. I don't think I'm cool anymore, but I thought so then. And so here I am at 18 in Mexico. We're, uh, just stay on that picture for just a moment. We're there. And uh, what this is a picture of is it was the first time I ever had Jesus, a Jesus encounter. In other words, I, I was sitting in this, we were praying about what we were supposed to do, and I felt like the Lord showed me an eagle. I said, okay, that's great. And I felt like the Lord said, go left only. And so I was like, okay, whatever. So I told the group, and we have a bunch of, you know, dumb young people that we just all said, hey, let's go into the street. We've never been here before. And, you know, there's all kind of cool violence going on in the street, but we're still going to go. And we just turned left left and left and then all of a sudden we see this eagle which is actually if you see the eagle that's the, the, the T if you can you know that's uh, that's actually a, a very famous beer in Mexico and uh, then we walked into the store and there was this dude this uh, this Catholic dude that you know uh, was running all of the different beer stores at the time and uh, we walked in he ended up giving his life to Jesus and I found out a year later that he closed down all of the shops because he didn't want to sell beer anymore and so you know take that as you will but I thought that was a pretty cool little thing that happened. That was when I was 18, and it got me curious about Jesus. And then fast forward a few years, and I preached my first message at Elevate when we were in the in the back building. And Jeremy, you'll love that. I used to wear I used to wear the uh, button-up uh, shirts from Aeropostale. That's what that is. That's an Aeropostale shirt. Since then, I've learned that Aeropostale. I didn't know this at the time, but I realized I was wearing it, thinking I was cool. And then somebody came up to me afterwards. And he said, "You know, that's only for middle schoolers." And I thought. Oh gosh, here I am, 20 years old, wearing a middle school polo. And so there I am, and you can see my cool little message to hell with the devil, which I've never preached since then. It was one of the worst messages I've ever preached, but it was a lot of fun. So if you ever preach and you have a really, really bad one, it's okay. They get better, hopefully. So that was the first one. And then we started seeing these big salvation calls at, uh, at Elevate. And so that's a picture of that in the, in the, back, uh, in the back building. And, and we saw all kind of crazy stuff happen here. Then... From there, some different things happened, and I, I remember telling people, and everyone thought I was crazy. I said, I had this dream I'm going to preach in front of huge crowds and in front of stadiums. And I was like, oh, whatever, you know, you must be smoking good weed. I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, what's, you know, what's going on? And so then all of a sudden, like, one thing after another happened, and then two years ago, 
this picture happened. And so this is in Kurik, Indonesia, and uh, Mikey was there with me. You took the picture, didn't you? And so he could tell you that this is a real picture. It actually happened. And uh, so there was, I don't know how many people that were there, maybe two or 3,000 in a town of 900. It was pretty cool. But in the middle of this, this is what's crazy, is these two ladies got healed, the next picture. And, uh, like, you can notice that they're not Christians that were healed. They were Muslim ladies that got healed. And one, her eyes opened, another, her back was, uh, was totally healed. And there you could see, she's not trying to pick boogers out of my nose. I'm actually telling her, she, this was the one that was blind. I said, reach for my nose. And as she's reaching, I'm kind of moving, and the crowd's laughing. And th this is the first time that I saw how in the world are people that are not Christians getting healed? What is happening here? So then, fast forward later on, about a year from then, this picture happened. And so this was, uh, I don't know, maybe locals said there was about 25,000 people in the crowd. Maybe it was more, maybe it was less. I don't know. And you, all the way on the left-hand side, you can't really see it, but you see the little smoke happening. That's where the stage is at. And you got the whole uh, field full of people. This was in Africa, in Tanzania. And then uh, I have this cool picture. I actually, this lady, she was healed, and I should have had her raise it, but I said, give me that crutch, and I lifted it high in the air because I wanted to be the one that was raising the crutch because I wanted a cool picture, right? And so, but she was actually, she needed, she needed the crutch to walk, and I grabbed that thing from her, lifted it high in the air. She's not really smiling. She's probably thinking, what's wrong with this guy? And I was thinking, what's wrong with me too? But th this happened in, uh, in Africa. For those of you that, uh, that are wondering, can you do the same thing? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. Now, I'm going to skip the, uh, the two videos, and I want to go to the very last picture. The very last picture was uh, about three months ago in Indonesia. And uh, this crowd is about 9,000 people. 85% of them were Muslim. And so if you do the math, you, know, you have somewhere between 7,500 and 8,000 Muslims in this picture with hands raised up saying yes to Jesus. And so I want you to know that it's possible for you. Now, remember the first picture I showed you we can throw that first picture up again. This is not where it started. Where it started was when I was 18, which is where a lot of you are at right now. So I want you to think, what is it that God has put in your heart to do? Because he can do it through you. He can do it through you. And so I want to share a message tonight of what I, uh, how all this happened. I want to share a message of, 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 of how you can do the very thing God put inside of you. It's really simple. It's, it seems like a lot but it's really simple. It comes down to simply trusting who Jesus is. And that's what it's about. It's not about anything else but trusting who Jesus is. If you ask me, do I think it's possible to do all that? Absolutely not. Do I think it was possible on my own? No. Am I confident when I get on stage? Absolutely not. I'm terrified. In fact, when I get up there, I sweat huge drops. I, I have a little panic attacks before I get on the stage, and I, uh, Mikey's shaking his head yes because he knows it's true. He's been in the back of the car with me driving, you know, uh, where we're going to the field, and I'm freaking out not knowing what's going to happen because I have to stand in front of all of these people that have never heard of Jesus that really are pretty much saying, is he going to heal me or, or are you a liar? And so I'm the big white guy. It's not like I can get away in the town because everybody knows where the white guy is at. So it's like, if something doesn't happen, they're all going to be like, oh, that's the loser that said something's going to happen, and it didn't. And so, you know, I'm sweating, I'm, 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 I'm anxious, but in the middle of it, when I ask Jesus to help me, I have complete peace. And so the thing inside of you that's bigger than yourself probably brings you anxiety. It probably brings you a little bit of worry. It probably brings you that what the heck is going to happen moment. That's how you know it's from God. Because it's bigger than yourself, and if it's bigger than yourself, that's how you know it's from God. Because he never gives you something you can do on your own. And so I want to look into this because I'm thinking about what do I want to do over the course of the 2020s? Like, now that we're in 2020, what do I want to happen by 2030? And, and I don't know how all this is going to happen, but, but I just wrote down uh, some things that I, that I want to do. The first thing that I want to do, and I'm sure there's going to be some people that are absolutely going to love hearing this, maybe not, but... Uh, but I, I want to be, I, I want to hold myself 75 gospel campaigns, both in the U.S., Canada, and around the world. I hope most of them are in the U.S., because I have a heart for the U.S. That's what I want to do. Is that impossible? Yeah, that's 7.5 a year. That's, you know, that's 130,000 U.S. dollars just to pull those 7.5 off on a small scale. I don't know how it's going to happen. The other thing is, I, I want to get, you know, those of you who have been hearing this for a long time, I, I actually want to get married and start a family. And, you know, don't worry, that, that's going to happen real soon. And so, oh, yes. And then, for those of you who don't know, just go on my Facebook. And then we have, 
The other thing I want to do is I want to give $250,000 to the gospel. How am I going to do that? Do I make enough to do that? No, absolutely not. But it's a, that's something God put in my heart. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I, but I want to do that a, a, over the course of the next decade. And what I mean by the gospel is I don't mean to just the, this organization. I, I mean reaching people that have never heard of Jesus before. And then the fourth thing I want to do, which has been a dream of mine for seven years, but I don't know if it's ever going to happen, hopefully it does this decade, is I finally want to finish that stupid book I'm supposed to write and launch it. So I've been sitting on, why am I sharing the things I want to do? To encourage you. What is the things you want to do over the next decade? Because God's put it inside me. I share mine, not to, not to say, look, this is what I want, but, but what are you believing God for that's bigger than you, that, that only he can do it, that only you can do it with his help? Because that's the thing he's put inside me. Now, it's all based of how has this happened? Hebrews 13a. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He never will change. He never has changed. If he was faithful then, he's faithful today. So you can, launch, you can, you can rest everything that you were believing for on the fact that he has never changed. Uh, maybe you're in the room and, and you're young, but you have some kind of issue in your body. You can rest on the fact that Jesus has never changed and he can heal you today. Uh, maybe you're in the room and... and and you've been believing God to have a baby, and you haven't been able to do it. You, you can know that God promises right there, right then, that, that he has said it is good for you to have kids and multiply. It's a promise for you. Uh, maybe you're in the room, and, and you have so much worry and doubt, and your mind is cluttered, and you have no idea where you're going to go. I want you to know that God promises to give you peace through Jesus Christ. And that is a promise. He doesn't, he's never changed. So when you think of the big impossible thing, keep thinking about it because you can do it. You can do it. I, I'm totally changing this message. I came up with something else, but, but I know that there's dreams and there's passion and purpose in this room. A, a, in fact, I, what I want you to know is you can ask. You can ask any of the leaders that have been here. About well, maybe five years ago, we were experiencing a crazy thing with God among young people in this city. I mean, I mean, at one time, we had 170 kids, 170 young people in this room. We were running around saying, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? And people were fighting and trying to punch each other in the face playing basketball. And do you remember that, Dan? It was wild. And I was like, I was always like, okay, Jeremy, you're in charge of basketball. Because I didn't want to deal with it. It was just, it was just nuts. And, and it, they were just, you know, it was like, people looked like they were kicking roids trying to go after each other. It was awesome. And so it was like we had this huge thing going on. That same thing can happen again and will happen again when you trust Jesus. And so this is what I want to look at. So, so, so what do we base it on? We base Everything on Hebrews 11, 1 through 2. Look at this, Hebrews 11, chapter 1. If we can throw it up on the screen. It says, now faith is confidence. Confidence. Look at your neighbor and say confidence. Confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Verse 2, this is what the ancients or the people who went before us were commended for or applauded for. It is, number one, confidence. Number two, assurance. What is in confidence? And it's confidence, and, and I'll show you what it is. 1 Corinthians 15, go to throw it up there. 1 Corinthians 15 says this, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. And it goes on to say, But thanks be to God, he gave us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know that the gospel is this. The gospel is that you have victory, not in heaven, but you have victory right here, right now, on earth because of what Jesus did. Because he died, he bled, he, by his blood you were reconciled or brought back to God, and by his resurrection you have complete victory. I want you to know you do not have to wait for yourself to die and go to heaven to have victory. You don't have to wait for you to get older. You don't have to wait to reach a certain status of super spirituality. That's all crap. All you have to do is settle on the fact that you can have it right here, right now, today, because of what Jesus did. You got to get that in you because, because as a young person, people will try to say, oh, you got to wait. You're not, you're not there yet. You don't have what it takes. You know what? That is ridiculous. Just do a little and, get, and go on with your life. Forget what they say. Let it go in one ear and out the other because you can have victory right now because of Jesus. That's, 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 that's the confidence. That's the confidence. Now, I don't have this scripture, but... But, but I'm going to go ahead and read it to you because this is the other thing you have confidence. If you can have confidence, how do I, because the, we said, because the victory's already won, how do I know it's already been won? I know it's been won because of this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, since since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Can someone bring me up a chair? I, 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 need, I need a chair. If we could put a chair right here in the middle. Any chair would be good. It can be, 
It can even be one up here. It doesn't matter. But, but we, we have, it says that, that that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Thank you. So this is what I want to show you. That is awesome. Jeremy, Pastor Jamie ran all the way to the back to get a really nice chair. And, and, and Tyler just says, this one. That's awesome. So this is a key I want you to get. You can be confident in who Jesus is. Because where is Jesus right now? Where's Jesus right now? What's he doing there? Sitting at the right hand of the Father. Now, this is weird. Like, we think that, that we have the, all this battle. Like, so many people want to say, oh, we have a battle with you. If you're in church for more than four minutes, you hear people say, even if it's in the lobby, oh, the devil is just, he, he, we have such a battle going on right now. We talk about this battle, and it's like, oh, the battle, the battle. Oh, he said, it's, it's so, this is such a battle. If there is such a battle going on right now, then why in the world is Jesus sitting? It says he's sitting. Does it not say that? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, it says that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. Is sitting a battle position? No. Why is Jesus sitting? Jesus is sitting because the work that Jesus had to do is done. It's complete. It's finished. So, so if Jesus is sitting, he's resting. Why is he resting? He has nothing left to do. This is the story of the gospel, but so few people preach it. When Jesus died and he rose again, Hebrews 2.14 says that he destroyed the one who had the power of sin and death, that is the devil. In other words, there's complete power in the simplicity of what Jesus has done. You don't need a book on healing. You do not need a book on deliverance. You do not need a special super revelation that you found somewhere in the middle of, a, of the book of the Bible that no one has ever heard before. What you need is you need an understanding that Jesus is sitting down because he is finished with the work. And if he is finished with the work, then why are we going crazy trying to do something ourselves? He's sitting. It's done. It's finished. This is beautiful. This, this is a picture of grace. It, see, see I, I know I'm supposed to preach like fluffy messages and like things that are like very, very simple to, to, to young people. But, but if you could, if you, I wish somebody taught this to me when I was 18 years old. So, 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 so I, I want, if you could get this tonight, it will change your life. That Jesus is sitting. He's not moving around trying to do things. Why? That's confidence. That's confidence. And then we can have assurance. Well, why can we have assurance? That's what Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 said, is we can have confidence and assurance. If you have confidence in the gospel, if you have assurance in the gospel, there is nothing else that you need. There's nothing else that you need. Why can we have confidence? We have a confidence because of Romans chapter 8, 31 through 39. You can write it down. I'm not going to read it all. But it lists all these different things that try to separate us from the love of God. And then at the very end, it says nothing on heaven, nothing on earth, or nothing in hell can separate us from the love of God. It's the assurance that no matter what is going on, nothing can separate you from Jesus. Why can nothing separate you from Jesus? Because what Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, the fact that he is sitting down. Sitting. Because it's done. When you realize that there's nothing that you need to do, but is already done through Jesus. You can rest in the fact that you are created the way you're supposed to be. You don't have to try to prove yourself to nobody. You don't have to work hard to try to receive a blessing from Jesus. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to work hard to try to receive forgiveness of sin. You don't have to try to be a better person to, to come to Jesus. You don't have to, to get your life totally cleaned up to start making a difference in the world. You can rest in the fact that Jesus is sitting and when you trust in him, all of that other stuff comes automatically when you trust in Jesus. In other words, when you trust in Jesus, you don't need anyone to tell you to clean up your life because you clean it up because Jesus is there working with you. And it's called grace. He gives you the power to do the thing you couldn't do without him. You, you, you don't have to have everything, uh, you don't have to have everything together. And you, you don't have to think and wonder how is the miracle going to happen because you have the miracle worker sitting down living inside of you. And, and so you don't have to worry about that. It's sitting down and realizing Jesus is sitting. I'm going to rest in that. And, and, and when, you, when you see that, it, it makes it come a lot. So it's a lot easier to say this than when you're going through something. Because you ever notice when you're going through something, it becomes a little bit difficult. 
And, and I had a different story I was going to preach, but we keep talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so we're going to jump over to Daniel chapter 3 for a moment, because I want you to see this, because we see that in the middle of that, that there is great power. So as Tyler and Jeremy said, that there's a story of three guys who, who, who were thrown into a furnace, and it's found in Daniel chapter 3, and, and in that story, we see that there's a king, his name's Nebuchadnezzar, and he's a little bit, you know, I don't know, you know, I would think that I was going to say some really bad political joke about, you know, I'm not going to say a bad political joke about Donald Trump. What are you talking about? I love that, man. I was going to say a bad political joke about somebody else, but I'm not going to. And so, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar is probably a lot like the lady that, you know, you know, you know, the, 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 the lost to Donald Trump. And so this is just what I think of when I read the Bible. I, I see her. I'm only kidding. I'm joking. That's a bad joke. I'm only kidding. Please don't put this on YouTube. And so then all of a sudden we see King Nebuchadnezzar, someone is raising their hand like, yes, it's on YouTube already. Oh, gosh. And so we can see here's King Nebuchadnezzar. And, and King Nebuchadnezzar, he thinks he's really great. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, I'm so wonderful. And, and you know, I'm so beautiful. And you know what? I'm going to put myself up in the image of God. And, and I'm going to make this beautiful statue. And it's going to be made out of gold and, and all these other things that I don't remember what the Bible says, but I know gold is one of them. And then all of a sudden he's going to say, when, when all the... When all the musical instruments blow, you, you, and it talks about like like harps and zithers and lyres, and no one even knows what a zither is. It sounds more like a so, so some weird Dorito chip. Like I have some zithers, you know what I mean? But it's like it's some kind of musical instrument, and it says that when they blow and they play all those things, they have to they have to kneel down, and if they don't kneel down, then they're going to be thrown into a furnace. And it's like, oh man, this is not so good. Like like what's happening here? And so he brings everyone together, and and, and he has the zithers play or. Maybe you eat the zithers, I don't know. And then the harps and the lyres, they all play. I don't know what they are. I know what a harp is. I'm not that dumb, but I have no idea what a lyre is. Tyler, do you know what a lyre is? It's a guitar. Do you know what a zither is? The worship the worship people don't even. Promise, do you know what a zither is? She's nowhere in the room. She doesn't know. She got so scared about zither, she ran. And so no one knows what a zither is. Not even the worship people know what it is. And so they play all these instruments, and then all of a sudden, they have to kneel down. So, so what happens here? Is, 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 is it brings everyone together. It kind of probably looked like one of those field times about 100 because there's millions of people coming in. And all of a sudden, they, they play these things. And, and you know, they, woo, the zither and the, the, the harp, the string in it, and the lyre. I don't know what that is. Maybe they, you know what I mean? And so you got all these different things. And then all of a sudden, everyone kneels down except three guys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're out in the middle of the crowd. And somebody comes up and tells Mr. Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebi, hey, there's some dudes that won't bow down. And, and King Nebi gets a little bit upset, and so he says, bring those three dudes to me. I need to talk to them right now. And so he brings the three guys, and, and, and he says this. This is what he says. This is in uh, Daniel uh, chapter 3, verse 15. He says, now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music. Like, like what is that? All kinds of music. So evidently you had hillbillies playing bluegrass with some really ghetto rap going on, all kinds of music, all at the same time. That way everybody can find the music that they like. And it said, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship, you'll be thrown into the, immediately into the blazing furnace. That what God will be able to rescue you from my hand. What, you know what he says, what God can rescue you. I love this. So then, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they replied to him, and they said, King Nebuchadnezzar, this is in verse 16, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this man. I want you to know that you don't need to defend yourself in front of anybody. People want to talk bad about you. They want to talk bad about the God you serve. You don't need to defend yourself. You, you, you don't even try to defend yourself. People always say, oh, defend it, defend it, defend it. And they get in all these arguments that they can't even win. Well, let me ask you something. Do you notice that us as young people, what is the number one thing people want to argue about? Religion. Religion, exactly. Religion. Old covenant old testament religion did jesus ever once and all of the gospels defend old covenant old testament religion no why are we defending something jesus never defended jesus never defended it you don't have to defend it the only thing you have to stand for people want to come up to you and they want to I, there's nothing i need to, I, I don't need to defend myself to you i don't uh, in this matter I'll, i trust in jesus I, I don't care what religion says i follow jesus no one can come up against you when you make that argument. No one's going to smack you in the face for saying, no, I, I believe in Jesus. He, he loved me and I love him back. Like, like, like what, stop trying to defend religion. And all of a sudden, they say, if we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. He will deliver us. In other words, 
Our, our God is going to protect us, and he protects you today. Whatever you got going on, our God, Jesus, protects you today. That's what they're saying. And he says, we'll protect you from what? Your majesty's hand. Yeah, this, is, this is people. They want to throw shade on you. They want to throw all kind of stuff at you. They, 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 want to, they want to tear you down, take you out. And all you have to say is, listen, I know what you're saying, but I have a God who can save me. I don't need to defend myself against you. But then here's the key here, and I love this. I'm so happy neither one of them said this. This is one of my favorite points of the whole Bible. This is it. Verse Daniel chapter 3, verse 18. I love it. Write it down. Put it on Twitter. Whatever you, Don't put it on Twitter. Old people use Twitter. Twitter is boring. Like, maybe you need to make a TikTok to this. I don't have a TikTok. How many people have TikTok? You have a TikTok? <laughs> I was going to say, bro, aren't you almost 30? And he saved himself. I use my cat. My cat is on TikTok. Frank is on TikTok? This is weird. And so all of a sudden, then it says this. Remember, they said our God is able to save us, but even if he doesn't, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the image of gold you've set up. My God is able to save me, but even if he doesn't, I'll never bow down to you. You take that attitude wherever you go. Jesus is able to heal me, but even if he doesn't, I'm not going to bow down to the sickness. My, uh, 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 Jesus is able to, to walk with me, but even if he doesn't, I'm not going to change the fact that, that I'm, I'm with him. But Jesus has helped me, is able to help me with my vision, but even if he doesn't, does, I'm not going to bow down and do it the world's way. Jesus is able to help free me, but even if he doesn't, I'm not going to go look for something else for freedom. I'm going to trust in him. It's a beautiful thing because they have this idea that there's no turning back from Jesus no matter what. So then, Mr. Nebi is furious, and we see the story that happens is he cranks the furnace way up and he throws the boys in, and then they're all firmly tied up. And then, in verse 24, and King Nebi leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men we tied up and threw into the furnace? Certainly. He said, look, I see four men walking around on the fire. And in Revelation chapter 1, we know who that fourth man is. Because Revelation chapter 1 tells us that Jesus' feet are bronze like they were in a furnace. It's Jesus standing with those guys in the middle of the furnace. No matter what you got going on, Jesus stands with you right in the middle of it. He's with you. You can have confidence and assurance. And while you're walking through the fire and you're walking through the torment and you're walking through the hell and you're going through all the crap that people want to throw shade at and, and you're doing this and you're doing that, you can have confidence the fact that Jesus is with you in the middle of the fire and he's not just with you, but he's sitting down in the middle of the fire because he knows that the victory is already won through him. It's a beautiful picture. So many people ask me, can I do something great? They, 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 this is like... The, the two questions everybody asked me th t today is, is, one, is, 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 I think the number one question was, what was about, like, my dating life. Just, I'm not going to answer the question. Just go on Facebook, look at my profile picture, you figure it out. But once you go black, you never go back. And then all of a sudden, for those of you that don't say, so those of you like, oh my God, did he say that? I can say it, okay? She's from Africa, I can say it. And so, then, uh, some people are looking at me like, what? Did you really say that? Yes, I did. And then, Hey, I'm not going to be here next week. You're going to have to deal with it, Pastor Jeremy. I'm sorry. And so, and so, and so the, then the other thing people ask me is they said, uh, can I do what you do? And, and one lady said it like this. That's why I did my hand. Can I tell you something? There's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about you. We're all the same. There's nothing special about us. But we have a very special Jesus who is sitting, and it's finished. And Romans 8.11 says that the same spirit that conquered the grave lives in you. You can do it. You got it in you. Just so stop letting people put limits on you and start going for it big. I don't know what it is you got going on big in your heart, but step out and do something about it. I, you start small. God started with me by saying, look for an eagle. Like, like what eagle? I don't know, that eagle over there in the middle of the street that's actually a beer sign in the middle of Mexico, the picture I showed you. Start small and trust God with the impossible. And you can do it too. People all across this place that, that have a big dream inside of them. And we're going to believe for it tonight. There's also people in the room that are saying, what's all this about? It's about Jesus and the fact that he died and bled and rose again from the grave. Before I go anywhere, I want us all to close our eyes for a minute. I want to ask you a question. If there's someone in the room that you've never asked Jesus to your life, you're like, this sounds pretty good, and, and I've never heard anything like this, and, 
And, you know, I like the fact that Jesus died for my sins, and I don't really need to do anything but trust in him. I've never heard that before. I want you to know that your sins can be forgiven tonight. Everything you've ever done, everything that you've done today, everything that you've done in the past and you'll do in the future can be totally forgiven because of Jesus Christ. It's all across this place. You say, you know what, Dean? I may not know much, but, but I need Jesus in my life. I, wanna, I, I need him to forgive me of my sins. If that's you, just raise your hand where you're at. And, uh, I, this is beautiful. I see my hands there. And I see another one in the back. Dude, this is beautiful. Let's pray this prayer together. It's just, you can pray this out loud. Everyone that's prayed this prayer will pray with you. See, Jesus, I know that I've messed up, but I believe that you died for me. You forgave me of my sin. And you made me right in the eyes of God. Jesus, I also believe you rose again from the grave, defeating death and giving me life. Thank you, Jesus. Be the Lord of my life and the Savior of my soul. In your name I pray. Amen. That's beautiful. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to know that's the greatest decision you've ever made. Yeah, give these people, there's a few, so give them a, give them a clap. And, and Tyler and the team, you guys can go in and come back up. We're going to go into a little, bit of a, a little bit of a time here because I believe that there are some people in the room that God has given a very big dream to. There are books that are meant to be written in this room. I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about other people. There are songs to be sung. There are messages to be preached. There are people to be one to Jesus. There, there are, there, there, there's, there's a lot to be done in the room. A lot of dreams. There's been a lot of people that have been told for so long that they don't have what it takes. I want you to know that is a lie. You have what it takes. Because you have all that you need inside of you. You said yes to Jesus and that's his Holy Spirit. Well, first what I want to do because every time I preach, I like to give an opportunity if there's somebody that needs healed in their body. So let's have everyone stand up on cross. Everyone can go and stand up. And, and, and as everyone is, is standing up, I, there may not be many in the room because, you know, a bunch of young people. There may be some. But if you're saying, you know what, I need, I need healing in my body. If that's you, just, just wave at me. I, won't, I, just, I just want to see you. So, so I see several people. Okay. So, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it the way I do at the festival. This might be a little weird. We're just going to do, is that cool, Pastor Jim, if we do festival stuff? So what I want you to do is I want everyone in the room, raise your hands, both hands up towards heaven. We're going to give this to Jesus. I want to pray for people that need healing in their body right now. Now I want you to know that you can be healed not because of me, not because of Pastor Jeremy, not because of anybody in the room, but you can be healed because of Jesus. So Jesus, I speak to pain in the body. I speak to issues with eyes. I even speak to issues in the womb. I speak to people that have mobility issues and, 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 need, and need a restructuring in the joints. Jesus, I speak to every issue in the body. I speak to that pain. I speak to that spirit of pain and the spirit of infirmity causing the sickness. And I say, in the name of Jesus, come out now. And be healed in Jesus' name. Jesus is healing you right now. Right where you're at, Jesus is healing. His healing power is with you right now. His love is healing you right now. The love of Jesus is healing you right now. We thank you, Jesus. He's healing your body right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing people, Jesus. Jesus is healing you right now. In Jesus' name, you are healed. Now, now, now move your body around like you couldn't move it. Maybe you had a problem in your neck, move your neck. You had a problem in your knee, move your knee. Uh, maybe, maybe you had a problem in your hip, move your hip. Whatever it is that you had an issue with, you couldn't bend properly, go ahead and bend right now. Uh, you had problems with your eyes, look around, take your glasses off, look around. You have problems with your ears, check your hearing. Whatever you couldn't do before, do it right now. Just do it right now. I, I see some smiles. People are looking a little weird, so I think some stuff is happening. But, but begin to move around right now, like, like, like literally. Like if, if you couldn't do it before, do it now. Do it now. Jesus is healing you right now. So my question for you, is there anyone here that would say, Jesus healed me right now. My body feels different. Is there anyone here that could say that? So you feel something different in your body. Like it, it's different. It feels, that's, that's awesome. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, your body feels different right now. You, you feel like, so there's another one. See, this is, this is beautiful because Jesus heals people. I'm getting ready to turn it back over to Pastor Jeremy and he'll pray for you to have Whatever, whatever you want. I don't know if he, whatever he wants to do is, is good. But before I go, I want to pray for the dreams inside of people's hearts. 
If you have a dream that's bigger than yourself, I want you to get real honest and lift your hand high in the air. And I'm going to pray for God to give you boldness. Jesus, I thank you for the dreams in this room. I thank you that, that you have the power to make the dream come alive in their hearts. So Jesus, I speak to the hearts of these people, and I ask you to give them boldness to believe you for the dream. I, I, I thank you that the dream is coming alive. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would, you would just really come upon them now in a fresh way, that they would know that they're not walking alone, they're walking with you, that Jesus, you are doing it in your name. I thank you for who you are, Jesus. We thank you for it, Jesus. I speak to doubt and worry and fear, and it has to go in the name of Jesus. Because as we stand in the fire, you are with us. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Let's just begin to sing right now. Let's just begin to sing to Jesus. There's another in the fire, standing next to me. There's another in the waters, holding back the should I ever need reminded? Would power set me free? There is a grave that holds nobody. Where the power lives in me. There is another in the fire. to do is I, I want you to search deep in your heart. And I want you to take a step of faith tonight. And if you're saying, you know what, I'm going to believe for this unbelievable dream in my heart to come alive. I want you to know something. The young people of Cleveland are waiting for the dream that's in you. They're waiting for you. You, you, you know, th th for those of you that were around way back when, when when there was 160, 170 young people, that is just a shadow of what God wants to do here. And it, it, it is going to happen, and, and, and you, can, you can just visualize your friends and family coming to know Jesus. And if you're willing to take a step of faith and say, you know what, I, I, I'm going to do that, just come out of your seat and come forward right now. Just make this a moment between you and Jesus that you say, I'm forgetting the past. I'm forget what the friends think. I, I'm going for this thing. I'm going in deep. I'm going to believe for the impossible to happen. What, what, what time do we need to be done tonight? Never? Oh, man. So this is what I'm going to do. Pastor Jeremy, and then uh, Pastor Don, since you're here. And Jeremy, uh, Pastor Jeremy, I don't know if there's anyone else you want to bring with you, but what, what I'm going to ask them to do, I, if, if there's other people, grab them. I don't know who all does it. I have no clue. And so, the, so just grab whoever it is. And, and those of you that have responded, what I'm going to ask them to do is I'm going to ask them to come by. I'm going to ask them to pray with you. And, 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 and Tyler and the team to lead us in, 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 in worship. And I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to ask them to, to pray that the boldness and the love of Jesus will consume you. Because once you get consumed by the love of Jesus, that's all that matters. So I'm going to pray that the boldness and the love and the, of Jesus would consume you. Now when that happens... I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, nothing may happen to you. You may feel something, 
I, I don't know what it is. Like, like, like just, just be open to what Jesus is going to do in this moment. But the reason I want it to be them is I want you to know that it has nothing to do with any of us. It has everything to do with Jesus. And so, so they're going to pray, and if you guys don't mind going around and, and, and grab whatever team that usually does it, I, I, Grace and Ky, Kylie, I don't know who, who all does it, but whoever that is, just, just start, make sure you start on one end, and it makes sure everybody gets hit. And we're going to pray and believe. So let's raise our hands right now. Jesus, I thank you for who you are, that there is none like you, that in the middle of the fire you are there, that in the, as the walls are caving in, you're there, that as the, the waters are crushing us, that you're there, and in you we find peace and in you we find victory and in you we find purpose and in you we find love and in you we find everything that we need Jesus we thank you today Yeah. Uh-huh. 